Hey there, in this video, I'm gonna give you a complete and comprehensive tutorial on how you can qualify for the ZK Sync airdrop. I'm gonna walk you through step by step of 15 to 20 transactions that you can complete on the ZK Sync network that will increase your likelihood of getting an airdrop and then increase the actual amount of the airdrop that you will get. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm sure you're aware that ZK Sync is a layer two on the Ethereum network that has not yet released a token. And there's a bunch of different things that we can do today to increase our chances of getting that token when they do release it. Now, if you want to be able to follow all of the steps that I'm going to complete today, you're going to need around 150 US dollars. Now, don't worry, if you don't have that much, you can do pretty much everything that I'm gonna show you, but you just might not qualify for the maximum level, which I'll show you in a second because through the layer three platform, there's a bunch of NFTs that we will get as rewards for completing different types of transactions. And for some of them, you do need to have a larger amount of money. So if you don't have $150, you'll be able to get most of these done, but not all of them. If you do have $150, then you will be able to collect all of these badges and that will increase your chances of getting a larger airdrop. So let's get right into it with the first step, which is we need to bridge our funds to ZK Sync. Now I have 0.1 wrapped ETH on the Polygon network and I'm going to bridge it from Polygon to ZK Sync because the bridging fees are much lower if you go from layer two to layer two as opposed to going from the Ethereum mainnet to ZK Sync. Now I'm gonna throw a link to this layer three dashboard down in the description of the video but once you connect your Web3 wallet to layer three, you will be able to complete these quests, get experience points, level up and get these NFT badges. And each one of these is gonna be a reward for completing different types of transactions. But once we finish all of these, which I'll walk you through step by step, there's also a few additional things that we can do to increase our chances of getting a larger airdrop. And those bonus quests that aren't officially a part of this layer three might make all the difference in setting your wallet apart from the mass of people that will just be completing these simple quests. But for starters, we need to bridge our funds to the ZK Sync network. Now I am going to be bridging from Polygon where I have 0.1 wrapped ETH because it's cheaper to bridge from other layer twos like the Matic mainnet as opposed to bridging from the Ethereum mainnet where the fees are a lot higher. So let's start this first quest. And you can see that only 10,551 people have completed this so far. And this quest is that first gate where we have to bridge at least $175 worth of assets. Sorry, I thought it was 150, but it's actually 175. So that's why I have 0 0.1 wrapped ETH. So we have to bridge through the layer three bridge app, which I'm gonna open right here. Then you're gonna to want to connect your wallet. In this case, I'm using MetaMask, but you could use whatever wallet you want. And here you can select the from network and the to network. So make sure that you're bridging it to ZK Sync era and then select the asset. In this case, I'm gonna bridge my wrapped ETH, not my Matic tokens. So I'm gonna send all of it over and it's gonna be $178.92. So just over that $175 threshold, that's gonna qualify me to get this NFT. Now the layer three bridge isn't actually bridging itself. It's just routing your transactions through whichever bridge it finds that has the cheapest and the fastest results. So you can see that this transaction is going to route through the across bridge. It's gonna take less than one minute and it's gonna cost me very, very little in gas, only about one cent. So let's hit review route and approve transfer of my assets. I have to set the spending cap and what this is doing is just confirming that I'm allowing the application to access my wrapped ETH. So I'll hit next and approve the transaction. So this first transaction is just approving the access of my wrapped ETH and then I have to do another transaction to actually complete the bridge. And each one of these transactions is gonna cost me one cent in gas fees because I'm transferring from the Polygon network. So while this transaction is going through, I'll just say this video is probably gonna be a little bit on the longer side because I'm gonna give you a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide on how to do this. Okay, and it looks like the transfer has gone through. I now have my 0.1 ETH on the ZK Sync network. So let's go back over here. We hit verify that we've completed this transaction and that has been completed. Now there is a button here that says to open this up on social, but actually I've noticed as I did this with another wallet that I have, you don't actually have to share these and retweet these on Twitter if you don't want to. You just have to wait a few seconds for it to be unlocked. 
So now I can hit verify and I won't actually have to do that, which if you're not interested in sharing this on your Twitter page, well, you don't actually have to. You can still finish the quest. So we'll hit continue and we'll open our rare chest to see the reward. So these XP don't really mean anything to me. The whole point is to finish each one of these quests and then to establish our history of transactions on the ZK Sync network. Now, once we finish a quest, it automatically pops up with the next one. So we might as well just go ahead and do this, which is to start swapping coins or tokens on ZK Sync network using PancakeSwap. So let's open up this next quest. A prerequisite to completing this is that we have to have completed the first bridging expedition quest. So this is another gate that you won't be able to pass through, unfortunately, if you don't have $175 to bridge. But even if you don't, you can still make a swap on PancakeSwap and establish your on-chain transaction history that way. So we hit continue that we've completed the bridge quest. And then all we have to do is swap $10 worth of tokens on PancakeSwap. So I'm gonna open up the app here connect my wallet, and then we'll do that transaction. Now, what I'm just going to do is swap between ETH and USDC, and there's gonna be a number of different transactions that I have to do where I'm just gonna swap between ETH and USDC just to qualify for completing these quests. And every time I'm not gonna do a huge amount, I'll just do 0 0.01 for now. So this transaction is gonna cost me about a dollar and 38 cents. And right now you can see that the gas on the Ethereum network is around 30 guay, so not super high, but also not super low. This might not be the optimal time to be completing these transactions. And for example, if I hit low on the MetaMask custom gas, I might be able to save a little bit on the transaction fees, but then it will probably take a lot longer to complete. So I'm just gonna eat the gas fees here and confirm this transaction. Now, once a transaction has been completed, if you don't actually have the token in your MetaMask wallet, you can hit add USDC to wallet here, this button, and we'll automatically add it for you and you'll be able to see your balance in USDC tokens. So that's a nice way to keep track of all of the different assets that you have in your MetaMask wallet. Okay, so since we have swapped more than $10, let's go back to the quest page and verify that we completed this transaction. All right, this quest is also complete. So we'll hit continue and then get our XP for that. Okay, next up, we have to trade derivatives on the Satori platform. So let's go ahead and complete this quest. Now, in order to proceed with this, you have to have at least 10 USDC tokens to do this, which I do have because I just made that swap on PancakeSwap. So you can see the logical progression here as we go through these quests. So let's hit continue, open up the Satori app, and I'll show you how you can do this one. So like with everything, first we have to connect our wallet and sign in. Now with this, we don't actually have to make an options trade. All we have to do is make a deposit and then we can withdraw it immediately afterwards. Of course, we could also make trades if we wanted to. So what you wanna do is find this button here that says deposit next to the account section. You're gonna hit deposit and you're gonna choose how much. So I'll just do the minimum $10 to complete this quest hit confirm, and it's gonna pop up asking me to confirm in my wallet. I'll confirm that the max amount I want to deposit is 10, and we'll pay a small gas fee for this transaction. All right, so the deposit has gone through successfully. You can see I have 10 USDC in my Satori Finance account. So if we go back over here, we should be able to verify that we've completed this quest. Yep, there we go, all good. And I would just recommend going and verifying before withdrawing, but now that we know we've completed it, I can also just hit on the withdraw button, withdraw the maximum amount, and confirm this transaction. Now you'll see every transaction I'm doing is costing a few cents and sometimes a dollar or maybe even a little bit more. It depends on the gas fees on the Ethereum network at the time that you're doing this, but you are gonna have to spend a few dollars at least to complete all of these transactions and to complete all of these quests. So something to keep in mind, if you're bridging a similar amount that I did, so you know, $175 or so, you're probably gonna end up spending 10 to $20 of that in gas fees in order to go through this and complete all the quests. And the idea is that if you get a sizable airdrop, then it will more than make up for whatever you're spending in gas fees right now. Okay, the next quest is to provide liquidity on the Maverick protocol. And this is a different type of transaction now. So, so far we've done a bridge transaction, we've done a couple of swaps, 
and we've deposited onto an options trading application. We didn't make any options trades there, but you could have if you wanted to. And so now we're doing a liquidity provision. So you click through all of this information here. And again, you need at least 10 USDC to proceed with this, which I do have. So I'll hit continue. And now we have to deposit USDC into the USDC ETH liquidity pool on Maverick. And this is another situation where you can just deposit it into the liquidity pool and withdraw it immediately and then claim your quest rewards. You don't actually have to leave it in the liquidity pool. So let's open up the Maverick app and connect our wallet. So it automatically opens up to the USDC ETH pool. You can select different pools if you want to, but this is the one that we need to go for. And I recommend just going with the default settings here and hitting next. And here on the mode, you can leave it just as static or you can do any of the other ones. Since we're just depositing and withdrawing immediately, it's not really gonna make a huge difference. And then you have to decide how much you want to deposit of each. I'm just gonna do the minimum amount again, which is 10 but you also have to deposit an equal amount in ETH. When you deposit 10 USDC, you have to deposit a small amount of ETH, $10 worth of ETH. So we're gonna confirm this transaction in our wallet. I have to approve the allowance of the spending of my tokens once again. So every time we do something here, we have to make a couple of transactions. Confirm our deposit here. Confirm the second transaction. So I have added liquidity. If we go back here, I should be able to verify this on the layer three quest. I've completed the quest. So now I can go back over to Maverick and then I will just immediately withdraw the liquidity. And in your Maverick positions dashboard, you can hit on the manage button of the position and you can just hit the remove button. You can select all and then confirm that you want to fully withdraw. So I'll get back the 10 USDC and the ETH that I put in. So approve the withdrawal. Another transaction fee here, 29 cents for this one. And we're gonna confirm that. All right, so I have withdrawn the liquidity that I just deposited. And if I go look in my MetaMask tab, you can see that my amount of ETH is slowly dwindling, but I still have most of my ETH and most of my USDC. So we have now completed five quests on the ZK Sync network and unlocked the Crypto Curious Achievement Fun. So those are all of the quests in a ZK Sync expedition on layer three, but there's other ones that we can complete. There's a whole other section called intro to ZK Sync. So let me show you how to do these ones. Now I accidentally completed one of these off camera, which is doing a swap with the Mute Dex, a decentralized exchange. All you have to do is answer a couple of questions, easy questions about Mute, and then you have to make a swap on the Mute exchange, which I'll show you how to do here. Open up the app. You connect your wallet and then you select which token from and which token you want to swap to and you make the swap. And in this one, you were meant to swap ETH to USDC. So if you swap any amount of ETH to USDC, you can complete this quest. Going back here though, let's do the intro to ZK Sync era quest. Now in some of these, you have to answer a couple of questions, a little quiz to get through it. This one is one question. What is the primary purpose of ZK Sync era? And the answer to this one is to scale Ethereum and improve user experience. Very easy quest. Now, again, it's a situation where you're meant to retweet the announcement on Twitter. You don't have to do that. You just wait a few seconds. I think it's 10 seconds and I'll be able to continue with the quest here. Hit the verify button. And the final part of this quest is to bridge any amount to ZK Sync. Now, since we already bridged $175, we are good to go with this. So this was an easy quest for us because we already did the other bridging quest. All we do is click through and collect our experience points on this one. Now, unfortunately, this quest here, swapping on space fight has ended, so we won't be able to complete that. But the final quest in the intro to the ZK Sync era section is to do an OT swap on ZK Sync. And this is just another DeFi protocol that we can use to make swaps. So we have to open up the application here, again, connect a wallet, and we have to swap from ETH to USDC to qualify for this one. It did not specify an amount though, so let's just say I swap another 0.01 ETH. Okay, swap success if I go back over here and verify, we should be able to proceed. Yeah, and again, I will not share this on Twitter and we'll be able to finish the quest. And once you finish your quest, if you want to just go back to the ZK Sync dashboard, you just hit on this button here and you'll be able to see the ZK Sync quests that you can complete. You can also get points for coming back every day and hitting the GM button. 
Now there are lots of quests that we can complete in the other quest section, so I'm gonna walk you through how to complete most of these ones. For starters, there's the Bridge with MetaMask quest. So let's go through this one. You have to click through a couple of tabs of information and you have to have at least 0.01 ETH on ZK Sync to complete this. Now what we have to do for this is bridge at least 0.007 ETH from ZK Sync to Arbitrum using the MetaMask bridge. So let's open this up, select the from network and the to network. So we have to go to Arbitrum and it wants us to send at least 0.007, but let's send 0.01 just to make sure that we get over it. And you can also select to receive your funds via a different token if you want, but I'm just gonna receive it as ETH on the Arbitrum network. And again, this is MetaMask routing through the across bridge and taking a small commission for doing so, but you know what, we're doing this for the purpose of the airdrop, so let's go ahead and confirm another transaction and another $1 in gas fees. All right, so the transaction was confirmed. That was pretty quick. And if we go back over here, we should be able to verify. Ooh, legendary chest. All right, let's do an easy one now, which is swaps on layer three, which is this platform that we've been on right now. And for this quest, we have to swap $10 on any network on layer three, but we'll do it on ZK Sync. So we'll open up the swap app and let's again swap from ETH to USDC like we've been doing. So let's swap 0.01 ETH into USDC. Now let's go ahead and do this RhinoFi quest right here. This one is where we can bridge. This is one where we're going to bridge to scroll, but it's still going to give us points for the ZK Sync campaign. So let's open up the RhinoFi app. And this is another multi-chain or cross-chain bridge where you can select the token and the network. So we're going from ZK Sync era to scroll. I'll send, let's say 0.01 ETH, hit review and bridge and confirm the transaction. And just double checking, but yeah, there's no minimum amount for this bridge transaction. So we could send any amount that we want. And to finish out the quest, you just have to click through a couple of these, you know, share on Twitter things, but that bridge transaction is really all that we needed to do. And we unlocked a RhinoFi on scroll mainnet NFT. And you can see I started with 0.1 ETH, but through this process, I'm swapping and transferring to different chains. So I'm dispersing my funds a little bit, but this is actually going to be useful because then we can go to the scroll network, for example, and try to qualify for that airdrop or do transactions on the Arbitrum network, which I also bridge to using the MetaMask bridge. So there's just so much going on here, but it's actually going to be good for us because it ties our wallet into many different layer two networks. And with that, we have now completed 10 of the quests on the ZK Sync network, and that's more than 10 transactions. So we're really starting to establish our transaction history here, which is gonna be great for the airdrop. Now there's a lot more here, so I'm just gonna keep going through. You can see that I'm passing over the coin stats one for now, just cause it's a little longer and more annoying, but we'll probably get to that a little later. So let's do this one, introduction to Dmail. This is an application which is like email, but on the blockchain. So to complete this, we have to click through some of this information and then open up the application and connect our wallet. Now, once you connect your wallet, it's going to ask you to sign a transaction, to sign in or to log in, and you are supposed to send a email to somebody else. But if you don't have anybody to send something to, You'll notice that when you log in for the first time, you have a welcome email. And what you can do to complete the quest is just hit on the reply button, click through these little tutorial things, and then send a reply to the Dmail team. And every time you send an on-chain email through this application, you have to pay a small gas fee to do so. So let's send that, wait for a couple seconds for that to go through and then go back over here. And we should be able to verify that we have now sent a message on the Dmail application. Yep, okay, quest completed. So moving on, we're chugging through these. Next up is the introduction to ZK Link test. Again, you have to click through a couple of slides of information and then we have to make a deposit on ZKX. So let's open up the application, connect our wallet, and we have to sign a transaction to verify that we are the owner of this wallet. So essentially logging in. And now we have to make a deposit and I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's any amount as long as it's ETH. So we just have to deposit some ETH. So I'm going to hit on the deposit button, transfer crypto from my personal wallet on the ZK Sync network selecting the ETH token, and we'll just do 
a very small amount, 0.002, let's say. We'll pay the 50 cent gas fees for this transaction and wait for it to go through. Okay, the deposit went through and the quest is completed. So another one bites the dust. And as soon as we do that, we can just withdraw back to our wallet and we'll have our money again. Now let's go back over here and do the legendary rewards for ZK Sync users quest. Uh, okay, so for this one, you have to be an active user or you have to hold the Libertas, ZK Sync Libertas NFT. Now, if you don't have one of these NFTs, the ZK Sync team announced that they're going to be offering another opportunity for people to mint one, or you can actually go to an NFT exchange and buy one if you really want to. But as long as you've done some transactions, you will qualify as an active user. So you can just continue through and then finish the quest. Very, very easy one here. All right, stick with me here. The next quest is swapping on SpaceFi. So for this one, we're gonna have to do another swap. And then at the end of this, we'll have done a bunch of swaps into USDC. Then I'll just swap everything back into ETH and then you can do whatever you want. So I'll probably send my ETH afterwards to maybe the scroll network and work on airdrop farming on that network. But for now, let's open up the SpaceFi application connect our wallet. We have to perform a swap from ETH to USDC. So no minimum amount. Again, I'll just do a basic 0.01 hit swap. And this is actually nice here because there will be a gas refund from SpaceFi of up to 95%. So if you actually are gonna be doing swap, it's nice to use applications that are offering uh, gas refunds. And they're doing these, you know, just as limited time bonuses to get people onboarded and to make sure that they're using these new layer two networks. So let's confirm this transaction here. Uh, we already have USDC on MetaMask, so we're good to go there. And if I open up MetaMask, we can see that this actually only cost me 27 cents in gas fees. So pretty reasonable. And we've gotten to the point now where we've transferred basically half of the assets into USDC. So go back over here, verify that we completed that swap and we get another quest completion. And up here, you can see that it tracks the number of quests that you do on each chain. So for ZK Sync, we're now at 14 quests. If we hit 20, we will be considered a scaling specialist and apparently only 0.8% of users earn that badge. So really that's what I'm aiming for right now to hit that scaling specialist and to be in the top 1% of users because if we're talking about airdrop potential, that is obviously a good target to have. All right, next up is the Explore ZK Sync quest. So let's check it out. For starters, we have to click through a couple slides of information. Then it wants us to bridge to ZK Sync. Now, since we've already completed a bridge, we should be able to just proceed. Yes, we have. The next thing is it just wants us to open up the ZK Sync dashboard for layer three. So we've already done that. And finally, it wants us to make any transaction on ZK Sync. So we've already done that and we should be able to automatically complete this quest. And you can see that there is some overlap on some of these, which makes it a little bit easier to collect some of these badges. All right, five more quests until we hit that top 0.8% of users. So let's keep going through some of these, maybe with a couple of easy ones. For example, this quest here, what is layer two? Well, to complete this, all you have to do is make any transaction on a layer two, which obviously we've already done by this point, and then answer a five question quiz. So. Question one, what is a layer two scaling solution? The answer is the second, a technology that helps increase the transaction capacity of a blockchain network. Next question, what is the main benefit of using layer two scaling solutions? Reduced transaction fees is the answer. Number three, what is a common example of a layer two scaling solution? The answer here is actually Lightning Network, which is the Bitcoin layer two. Number four, what is the name of the layer two scaling solution that uses side chains? The answer to this would be Plasma. And the fifth and final question, what is the main benefit of layer two scaling solutions for blockchain networks. The answer is that they increase the speed and throughput of transactions. So once we complete this little quest, we're done. Next, let's do this as ZK Sync era for which we'll get to mint a commemorative NFT as well. So the first requisite is that we have to have transacted on ZK Sync, which obviously we've already done. And the second is to retweet the announcement. So we'll just wait another five seconds and collect our quest rewards. All right. And these NFTs for some reason are minting on the Polygon network as opposed to the ZK Sync network, which seems a little counterintuitive to me, but maybe holding one of these in your wallet will be a prerequisite to getting a larger airdrop. So it's good to complete these. 17 out of 20, just three more to go. Let's complete this swapping on Maverick one. We have to make a swap on the Maverick protocol. Now you probably remember we just provided liquidity, but now we can go back to the application 
and make a swap. So let's just swap again from ETH to USDC like we continually do. And we'll be able to confirm this transaction, get a nice little gas refund here of up to 80%, which is always nice. And over here, we can verify that the swap has gone through, skip through the Twitter thing, and we've completed another quest. We're getting close. And in a second, I'm gonna show you how you can actually deploy a contract on the ZK Sync network, create your own token or meme coin, and that is gonna make you technically a developer, even though it's super, super simple, and all you have to do is click a few buttons and confirm a couple of transactions. So stick with me for that. Woofy on ZK Sync, that is the next quest. So we have to do another swap, and we have to swap $5 or more of ETH on the Woofy app. So I guess I'll just swap again between ETH and USDC. All right, so let's hit swap and confirm this transaction. Eat another gas fee for the purposes of airdrop farming. And then we should be able to go back here and collect our quest rewards. Woo, bye. All right, we are now at 19 out of 20. So we're getting super, super close. So this last quest I'll do here is with Izumi Finance. What we're gonna have to do is just make yet again another swap from ETH to USDC with yet another decentralized exchange application. And there is no minimum for this one at all, but I'll just do my standard amount and confirm the transaction. All right, there we go. We have now unlocked the achievement scaling specialist by completing 20 ZK Sync quests, which puts us in the top 1% of people that are trying to complete these quests. And of course we can keep coming back to the ZK Sync dashboard on layer three, checking out the quests, making sure that we maximize our airdrop potential by completing all of them. Now, so far at this point, what we have done is bridge. We've done a lot of swap transactions. We've provided liquidity. We've deposited into an options trading protocol. And what you could do is push volume there by trading options. And of course, on all of these different swap applications that we just use, you can also push higher volume. The more that you do in terms of transaction volume, but then also transaction value is potentially gonna qualify you for a better type of airdrop. But there's a couple of other types of transactions that we can still make that will help us maximize our potential for an airdrop, but they're just not a part of the Quest system yet anyways on layer three. And the first one that I wanna talk about is deploying our own token. This is going to be deploying a smart contract to the ZK Sync network. It's gonna establish our wallet address essentially as a developer. And what you can do is go to thirdweb.com and deploy a pre-made token contract. It's super, super simple. And you don't have to actually write any code. You don't have to be an expert in Solidity. You just have to hit on the deploy now button here once you connect your wallet and you can come up with a name for your token. So let's call our token drop and we'll have the token symbol be drop. And for the description, we'll say drop and I'll upload my PFP as the image for this token. So once you've selected the name and the symbol for the token, you select the chain. In this case, we're going to deploy this token contract to the ZK Sync Arab mainnet and then hit deploy now. This isn't gonna be a very expensive transaction. It's gonna cost, you know, again, a dollar or so, like it always does. And once the contract deploys successfully, we sign another transaction to add it to our dashboard here. And now we'll be able to mint new tokens. We'll be able to burn tokens. We'll be able to airdrop tokens to other people if we want to. But we are now a contract deployer. So once you get to this section, what you do is you hit the token tab button and we'll mint some tokens. So let's say we want to mint, uh, I don't know, a million of these tokens. We'll mint a million drop tokens, hit the mint button, pay another small transaction fee. But now we have deployed a smart contract and we've interacted with the smart contract. And another thing we could do is we could burn some tokens if we wanted to. So let's say we wanted to burn 5,000 of those tokens. We'll just hit the burn button, pay another transaction fee. But now we have deployed a smart contract and interacted with it a few times. And if you do this, you're really gonna set your wallet apart from the vast majority of users on the ZK Sync network. Now, out of all the transactions that we've done so far, we've done a lot, but we still haven't actually interacted with any types of NFTs. And this is the final part to really round out our transaction history on the ZK Sync network. So this right here is DAP Radar. It shows the entire ZK Sync era ecosystem and I have filtered here for NFTs. So we can go through this and select a couple of different things that we want to do. One interesting one is the ZK Sync name service. So I'll open that in a new tab. And then we probably also want to just check out a couple of NFT exchanges or platforms like OmniChain, OmniSea, 
Element or OKX. But let's start with the ZK Sync name service. So let's launch the application here and connect our wallet. And this is where you can register a .zk or a ZK Sync domain name. So let's see if we can get CryptoCove.zk. Yep, that one is still available. No surprise there. So let's hit on that. And we can register this for 0 0.0031 ETH, so about $5. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Hit request to register and pay the gas fees on this transaction as well. Next up, let's go to the OmniC NFT launch pad. And here we can actually create an NFT collection, which is an interesting way that we can interact with the blockchain. We can either create an entire collection of different NFTs, or we can make an open edition, so one single image, and then it's unlimited supply. So let's just go ahead and create an addition on OmniC. Hit next. You have to name the collection. So we'll say, we'll just call it Crypto Cove. Welcome to the Cove. And then the end date of the mint, the royalty we can select. And we can link a website and a Twitter and a Discord and all that. But no point in doing that. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it at zero royalty. Hit next. And now we have to upload an image to this. So I am going to upload a picture of my cat when she was a kid. Connect the wallet and launch on ZK Sync. And to deploy an NFT collection, we have to pay again a dollar and 79 cents in gas. So this is the NFT collection. Now there's one more step that we have to do. We have to set the schedule and hit on drop scheduler and add new phase. And then on this, we can call it live mint. We can select a price and we can select a start date. So I will select today in a few minutes and an end date. Let's set it to just one month from now. Set no whitelisted address, max mint per address, let's just say 10, and hit save phase. Another transaction we have to confirm, but now the mint will be live and people can actually collect this NFT if they want to. And one final thing we can do is do a pre-mint. We can mint for ourselves a token if we want to. So I will mint one NFT of my own collection to my own wallet. So I have done all of that now. And if I go back to the collection page, you can see that it is inactive now, but the mint for this starts in four minutes. All right, one final thing is to just buy a regular old PFP NFT on the ZK Sync network. So we could do that on the Element Market. And if we select the ZK Sync network up here, we can see all of the different collection and we could just buy something that's super cheap. Now this right here, you can see is that Libertas Omnibus NFT that was released by the ZK Sync team. It's actually currently at a floor price of 0.02 ETH, so not super cheap, but they have said that they're going to offer another opportunity to mint new ones of these. So I don't necessarily recommend buying one of these right now off the floor. You might be able to wait for a little bit and then mint yours for free because all of these were minted for free, 126,000 of them. So it feels kind of bad to spend 0.02 ETH and buy it off of someone else. But let's just buy another random cheap NFT. We can just buy any one of these collections, a random one, and just pick up a cheap NFT off the floor for a few cents, and it will be another type of transaction. So let's go ahead and buy this Pepe Gobbler for 16 cents, plus of course the transaction fees. Okay, success. All right, so what have we done? Well, we've actually done a lot. We have deployed a couple of contracts. We've deployed an ERC-20, a coin contract. We minted coins, we burned coins. We deployed an NFT collection. We minted one of those. We bought an NFT. We made a bunch of different swaps. We deposited into liquidity pools. We deposited into an options trading contract and we completed 20 quests on the ZK Sync Layer 3 dashboard. So if you go through this and do all of the things that I just did, you will establish a pretty solid transaction history with your wallet and you will increase the likelihood that you qualify for a ZK Sync airdrop and get a decent sized one as well. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. I know it was a long one, but I wanted to show you step by step exactly what to do to complete all of these transactions and help you qualify for the biggest possible ZK Sync airdrop. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see other tutorials in the future, including StarkNet and Scroll, among others, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you later.